Hey, this is Gnumen, and today I'm going to do a Galland guide. Now, Galland, during early access, was considered the king of the meta. He's a very versatile character. He's not quite infantry, he's not quite armor. We will strike at the heart of the enemy, and our victory will be told as a legendary story. He's not quite air, but he's got a special unit from all three. Now, as he is an infantry character, you're going to want to take advantage of that. Standard rifleman, same as Simmons, a little discount. Like Simmons, he also has the bazooka men, which are good against enemy armor of all types except artillery. And you will get generally a better per dollar investment and per infantry against the cap investment with bazooka trucks. So let's get a few of those. Some basic uh, base defense with some artillery. Here's a bazooka versus a tank. You see, you can actually do a bit of damage. And a crowd of them can do a significant amount of damage. Next up, we've got this little guy. This is not specific to Galland. All German divisions have it. He's very fast. He's not as strong as the as the jeep the Americans have, but he will usually win a crate race against the jeep. I'll show you toe to toe. He also has to face the jeep to shoot it. He can't turn like the jeep just did. So, not even half health, and it cost a motorcycle. Keep that in mind when you are running for crates. You will not win the fight, but you might win the race. Bazooka's weakness. Artillery. You can handle artillery with close range attacks. They have a minimum range, so... One strategy I like to use is get some jeeps or motorcycles around the artillery within their minimum range. Very frustrating to lose artillery to jeeps and motorcycles. Alright, continuing the basic base defense. Got that lane cleared. What does the enemy have? Rifleman, tank. We can tell he's allied, and we can tell he's Beaumont. He has an ATG there. So, as we're building up, there are a few counters to ATGs. One of them is artillery behind cover. Another is bombers. Galland has dive bombers. They're fairly squishy versus enemy fighters and they're not they're probably the weakest of the bombers even after Henschel and um, P-38s but you get bombers it's hard to say no to that so let's cover it with some fighters if you get out the bomber early game a lot of them Less skilled players won't be prepared for it. You can do some serious damage without opposition. Because a lot of people wait before they start building up fighters. So since he's got Calliopes, I'm going to try to circle around my tanks. See that? And he didn't even get a chance to fight back. Keep it protected with a fighter cloud. 
because they will go after it. do have a turret that shoots backwards, if you can see it. At pursuing planes, it will usually die, though. So, get that fighter cloud up, get some anti-air covering it, if you can. If you see planes shooting at it, you can hide behind your base AA a little bit. So there we go. We just cleared out most of the attacking force with a combination of defense and uh, bombers. So, offense. Now these bombers are a little slow with their bomb dropping. Most ground units can outrun them, with the exception of ATGs, and probably Tigers, and artillery because they have to pack up and move. Alright, so now that's clear. Let's take our bombers back when we're not using them. They are prime target, especially for AI. See, he will continually build them with fighters as long as I have at least one bomber out. He feels very threatened. Let's build some tank destroyers as well. Okay, go at that. Go after that crate, bomb this um, not quite so defenseless ATG. Build up some tank destroyers. Sweep it around. When it's at low health, you can, kind of, you can even finish it off with uh, fighters. See that? Which you might consider if you don't have any bombers out. Otherwise, just build a bomber. There we go. That nasty ATG is gone. And we can continue on with the next stage. Tank destroyers. Now for Galland, these are pretty much your end game. True to the name, they destroy tanks. They also destroy AA, Jeeps, motorcycles, and artillery. They fire in a straight line though. So let's get those guys there. Now, in a level like this, with lots of cover, buildings and such, your tank destroyers may have a little bit of difficulty because they fire in a straight line, and enemy Cleopes can fire over the buildings, as well as enemy artillery, so you're going to have to use a bit of strategy. Uh, some levels are very favorable with wide open spaces. Those are also favorable for ATGs. So, be warned. These guys have more armor than ATGs, but they're quite expensive. They're tier 4 compared to ATGs, which are tier 3. So, we want to have a little defense on there. They're vulnerable to bombers as well. Uh, luckily for us, the enemy does not have bombers. But he does have Calliopes, so let's counter them. Let's bring out some tanks. They move a little bit faster. So, oh, here's the Calliope. So you want to get as much range as you can into these guys. You can outrange the Calliope, but not past cover. See? Now that we're in range of him, he's in range of us, and he's dead. Now the next trick, ATGs, whoever shoots first wins, tank destroyer versus ATG. 
or whoever has more of them wins. Bring in some basic units to cover yourself. All around. And now the bazookas really shine because he's bringing out a mass of tanks. But he cannot break through this bazooka line. So the tank started to get messed up a bit, but they're still going. And that's Gallant. Despite a few setbacks, easily rolled over our enemy onto the So see you can actually shoot his base without having to fully go in here with these tank destroyers. Similar to ATG, very good uh, attrition strategy. Alright. That is the basics of how to use Gallon units. Thank you for watching. And uh, have a great day or night. Let's see. A moving tank versus a bomber. The bomber cannot hit him. He will keep bombing, though. Until he stops. Um, I have no idea why that bomber died. Until he stops.